about our identity in Christ, and we've been talking about uh, how you can, if you don't know your identity, you'll have an identity crisis. You'll try to be something or someone God didn't create you to be. And so when you understand your identity, you're going to understand your placement as a believer and why God placed you here. You're going to find uh, this, this fulfillment, this joy, where you don't have to keep up with the Joneses, where you don't have to try to do everything else that everybody's doing. You don't have to look at somebody else's life and say, oh, they got this, and I, and I don't have that. So you won't be on your Instagram reel looking at everybody at, at, on vacations, and they're not on vacation. They just, you know what I'm saying, they're somewhere else acting like they're doing something. You understand what I'm saying? You won't be comparing your life to somebody else yeah. because you know who you are. And if you know who you are, you could be on a journey to where God's trying to get you where you need to be. Solomon didn't start off in the palace. Solomon started off somewhere else, you understand? And then he got into the palace with the wisdom of God. And now all of a sudden, he became one of the wisest kings at the time uh, when, when God had anointed him to be the wisest king that he was. But he didn't start there. Neither did David. David didn't start off in the palace. David started off in the, in, in the shepherd's field. So, but but God, and God anointed him back then and he knew his identity although people didn't see his identity they didn't recognize his identity David already knew who he was yeah. come on mm -hmm. that's right and when the church doesn't understand who they are they go be somebody else mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying y'all with me so far yeah. Yeah. are y'all yeah, ready yes yeah. sir all right. all right let's go father we thank you for the day we thank you for the word we thank you Lord God as we get into the word in these moments Lord God it be none of me all of you Father, I thank you, Lord God, as the word goes forth, that his words will go down deep into the hearts of your people, that their lives will never be the same again. I thank you, Lord God, transformation at the root level, not just at the at, at, at the intellectual level, Lord God. I thank you that these believers are strong. They're ready to do everything that you, they've been called to do. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 So let's begin with this question. Do you know who you are? Okay. Many of you can answer that question. You could say, you'll give me your name, okay? Then you may give me, you know, I'm from this city, or I'm from this, and I'm from that, right? But do you really know who you are, and do you really know your purpose for being here on this earth? Okay, when you discover your purpose, there, there, there are some days of your life that are very important. Number one is the day, number one, the day you were born, okay? That's very important. The day you were born was for a purpose and for a reason. But the next important, significant event in your life was the day you got born again. Okay, Because if you're not born again, okay, you're going to spend eternity somewhere else other than heaven. You understand what I'm saying? Scripture says that I'm not in a no judgment zone. Don't write me no letters. Don't, don't say that on YouTube. I'm just telling you what Scripture says. Okay? All right? So now, the next day of your life, is discovering why God created you. And when you discover that, and now you can live from that identity, instead of living from the identity of you when you were when you went to high school, or when you went to college, or what you've done with your money, or what, or what kind of job that you have. You can't find fulfillment in what you do. You'll find fulfillment in the one who created you. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? All right, now, let's look at some scriptures as we do here at Tulsa Life Church. All right, um, well, let me, let me say this to you. Where do beliefs come from? Okay, um, Here's a guy, uh, here's a diagram here. Beliefs can come from your environment. Okay, Beliefs can come from your environment. Okay, The environment that I came from as a, as a child, as into my early teenage years, it was a very violent environment where your, your head was always on the swivel. Y'all understand what I mean by that? Some people don't know what that means. That means you're always looking over your shoulders. Yeah. Okay? Because the statement was that you could hear that people won't make it to a certain age as a, as a young male. Mm -hmm. So always was on the swivel. Always in, in, in that type of environment. And I couldn't wait to get out of that environment because I said, man, I can't live here. Mm -hmm. it, 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 where is greener and greater pastors, right? Because I'm going there, you know what I'm saying? I, I need to find that type of place. I would look up, and all of a sudden, then everybody say, uh, I can remember growing up, everybody was like, well, move to Atlanta. You just can't move to Atlanta. Everybody just can't go to Atlanta. They already got too much traffic there, you know what I'm saying? Right. But, but when you get to Atlanta, but guess what? When I got to Atlanta, I took me with me. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. There I was in Atlanta. 
And I felt like now there are parts of Atlanta that are very beautiful and very parts of Atlanta that you can get into trouble. <laughs> and I found myself, right? Found myself in the places of trouble. Now I tried to escape trouble over here, but I could never run past the environment that was on the inside of me. The identity that I identified, the community that I identified with. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Oh no, I'm preaching better. Come on now. Yes. Amen. Yes. All right. It wasn't until that somebody I, I pulled me, I got pulled out of that environment because I kept hitting this silly. Okay? It wasn't going anywhere. And I said, now I know I didn't move four hours away from home to come up here to struggle. Mm. God, what's going on? Mm -hmm. I remember driving down 75, 85, the connector, and I'm listening to this radio station. I won't pull up at, at this moment. <laughs> but I'm listening to the radio station. And between Ludacris and some other song that they had on, the, they played this song, Yolanda Adams. Mm -hmm. And I remember the song. I, I remember just like it was just yesterday. Uh, the song, uh, Alone in a Room. Mm -hmm. It's just me and you. Y'all know I, I, yeah. I, I can't sing, so I'm not going to sing it. But, but I'm sitting there. I, I mean, you think Tressa cried. I was crying a river. You understand what I'm saying? Because I was like, Lord, I, I don't know what to do. Why am I here? I'm, I'm, I'm trying out. People are looking at me. I don't care. I, the tears are coming from my eyes. Mm -hmm. And I'm struggling. I'm hurting. Mm -hmm. i never forget. I get to work and this guy starts ministering the word of God to me. Mm -hmm. He said, man, you need to get born again. Like, what does that have to do with my pocket being straight? You know what I'm saying? I need some ducats, some dividends, you know what I'm saying? Snaps, you know what I'm saying? I need some money, brother. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't give me that religion because I didn't want religion. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I want transformation. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Because I said, if I'm going to make it from this environment, and I had this pride about me, I said, I can't go back to that environment right. as a failure. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I said, all right, I got to stick this out. I got to man up and get through this. But when I got born again, all of a sudden, I moved from one environment into a heavenly environment Amen. and changed my mind. Mm -hmm. This book opened up to me, and I began to see truths from this spiritual truths from this Bible, not this actual Bible, okay, but from the Bible, all right? And I began to, as I began to engage with God and begin to know God, God began to change what I thought I knew about my life at the tender age of 24. Okay, if you're under your 20s and you're under 30 right now, give yourself time. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Give yourself time. You think you know everything, but you don't know everything at this point. Right. I'm 48. I'm still learning every day. Still Amen. growing, still yeah. trying to figure out life. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Even as a pastor, well, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out. Be a lifelong learner. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Be willing to, to fail forward. If you make a mistake, be willing to go forward mm -hmm. in your life, okay? All right? Don't, don't, don't look back at the mistake. Don't even go back and blame somebody else in your past. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. We all started somewhere from scratch, but we can, we can move forward into our destiny. This is why understanding your identity is so important. Do I have your attention so far? Yes. 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 All right. So once I got born again, I started to develop this vision for a future. And I started to, to have this vision for a future. So I never forget, I, I was getting uh, at the church, so I kind of transitioned to the church. And then when I got to the church, they had the, uh, a soul winning team. So the soul winning team, they went out on the streets of Atlanta, right? Just so happened, the places, that the first place that they went was at around the club I used to go around to when I got to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 Bankhead, I don't know, none of y'all know where that yeah, stuff is, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bankhead, bounce, and all that stuff, that's where that stuff came from. So I used to hang out in Bankhead, and now God sending me in Bankhead with the truth. Wow. <laughs> Come on. That's how God will turn things around. Yes, he will. He, see, when he, the scripture says he's taken you out of darkness and he's placed you into his kingdom with a marvelous light, that is not just transformation in a moment. This is transformation all the way down to the root level where that thing that used to excite you, that thing that you used to love, you now hate it. But you don't hate people. You just see them in darkness and now you can be able to pull them out of that. Yes. 
and testify to them and say, hey, listen, God is real. They, they, they over there say, no, nah, God, ain't. man, you're trying to give me some religion. What I was saying, just the things I was saying. Uh -huh. mm. Because in my environment, that's what they were saying about church. We pick up things from our environment. Yes, we That's do. why we have to change our environment, get into a place like this where the word of God is being preached, where you can hear some new ideas, where revelation knowledge can change your life. Now somebody say, give me a scripture because I can see y'all y'all begging for a scripture. We ain't waiting one scripture yet. What? Romans chapter 12. Let's go there real quick. <laughs> I already know y'all. I know my group right here. Praise God. I know my people. Romans chapter 12. Praise God. Give me some scripture. I will. Praise God. I will. Praise God. Uh, they threw me off with all of the dedications and all of the stuff here, but that's all right. We're going to get back on it. Uh, with all the, the sweet words, I'm over here crying. I'm over here. It was great. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Watch this, what he says. I beseech you, therefore, what, brother, brethren, by the mercies of what? God. Uh, how many of you experience the mercy of God oh, in your life? Yeah, you can say All that. of us have, right? Man, yeah. Every day. So if we have experienced the mercies of God, can we now look at the rest of the scripture and see what the scripture is asking us to do yeah. and now live from that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Instead of living from the place of, you know what, let me just live from the mercy of God. Let me tell you something about sin. Okay. I felt like a uh, fire marshal, but let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> why are you talking so fast? I don't know why I'm talking so fast. I feel like I'm trying to get coffee. <laughs> it's probably the coffee. Right. <laughs> let me tell you about sin. Sin has the ability, even as a believer, sin can bring forth death. Mm, it's what the word right. is. Death means separation. All right? Sin also has wages. There is a paycheck to sin. Mm -hmm. So while you may say, I'm born again, I am the righteousness of God, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be at, at, at uh, I'm gonna be at Juneteenth and I'm gonna be a bad uh, 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 I'm gonna find me a new boo. Ooh, Jesus. Wow. With no ring. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. You and connect with somebody and Hook up with somebody. Mm -hmm. right. Scripture says when you go into somebody, you don't return. Mm -hmm. My God. Mm -hmm. That's how you get spiritual soul ties. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And then you become a product of your environment yeah. and your past results. Yeah. And they say, well, I can't get past this situation. Yes, you can. Because the scripture says you, you, you can't live by his mercies. Notice what he says that you present your what? Your bodies. A living what? Sacrifice. sacrifice. See, here's the sacrifice that Jesus did for us. He got on the cross and he was whooped. He was, he was, his body was shredded apart. They pulled him apart. They plucked his beard. They did all these spit on him. They slapped him. They pierced his side. They did all these different things. And that was a sacrifice for, he didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. And he said, as a child of God, I'm not asking you to get on the cross like me. I already done that. Mm -hmm. But can you live for me? Jesus. Can you live for me? Can you stop living for the world and live for me? And let me then live through you. Mm -hmm. Because there are people that need you. That need to know me and they're going to know me through you. Mm -hmm. Now watch what he says here. He says, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable, Reasonable service. service. So you ever been to a restaurant, right? And you've been to a restaurant, they, they bring you out your water, your menu, and all this kind of stuff. And, and you ever been to a, a good waitress or a waiter understands how to serve you. Yes. They're watching you to make sure if your water goes down or if your drink goes down. Why? Because they know that that's their service unto you, but that's their job. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. That's their job, right? They're watching to serve you to make sure you have everything that you need. Okay? But they also represent the company that they work for. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If they're looking for people to come into their restaurant, all you got, if they're looking for people not to come in their restaurant, all they got to do is hire the wrong server. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, people are like, nah, I can't go there. They, they throw your food at you. They, they, they put dirty water. I mean, you will stop going to that restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. Because they represent that company. Mm -hmm. You represent through your love. Through you, your actions, and your character, whether or not God is real. Amen. Mm -hmm. And because of what he did for you, 
You can't tell me that you can live any old way that you want to as a believer. That's right. That's right. So your identity, although the people that may be their testimony and what they say, that should not be any believer in this house mm -hmm. or in the body of Christ. Now, look at this verse 2. He says, who knows what he says? And he says, and be not conformed. Conform means to be squeezed into the mold to this what? World. world. Okay. It's a spell world for me. Uh, one, two, three, spell it. W-O-R-L-D. Okay, so he's not talking about the word of God. He's talking about the world. A world meaning cosmos. It means a system mm -hmm. that is being controlled by a spiritual force whom you can't see. Mm -hmm. See, somebody say, well, who is that? Who are you talking about? Are you just trying to tell us some kind of theory that's out there? Or this uh, Illuminati type of stuff? Let me show you what's going on in the scripture. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. Let me show you who's running the system. And once you see who's running the system, you're going to stop living like the world. Mm -hmm. Alright, y'all ready? 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. So, go to, you're in Romans right now, bus a right. Alright? I say bus a right for the first time visitors. They say, bus a right? What's bus a right? Bus a right. Just go to the right. Amen. Praise God. You'll get it. <laughs> watch this. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Watch this what he said. Well, verse 3, it says, but if our gospel be what? Hid. It's hid to them that are what? Lost. So if you don't know the gospel, it's hidden from you. Mm. And consequently, you could go in this life and be lost. You could be, you could be six, seven, you could be in the NBA, you can have this big contract, but if you don't know the gospel, according to this scripture, you may have money, you may have materials, you may have all the ladies, you may have all these different things, but according to the scripture, the person is lost. Yes. Yeah. So you have the power of the gospel in your lap, but you have the power to not only know the gospel. But live the gospel. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm preaching better than you saying amen. 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 All right. Uh, is, is this the right bunch I'm talking to? Yes. Should I go outside and talk yeah. to the bunch that's in the, in the, in the lobby? Right the oh, okay, all right. So I'm talking to the right one. All right, so verse 4 says, in, now why are they lost? Because verse 4 says, in whom the God of this what? World. Spell that for me. Is it W-O-R-L-D? Yeah. Then that's the one that Paul said don't be conformed to? Yes. Yeah. Because there is a system in place that's making that environment a certain way. That's feeding the, uh, feeding people certain type of knowledge to keep them away from God. Because he wants to keep them what? Lost. Yeah. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So there's a, there, God is not a party pooper trying to keep you from having a good time. Right. He's just trying to bring you to a place of another level that you've never been before. He's trying to bring you up to the level of kingdom living that he has already created for you to be since Adam and Eve. But they messed it up and now through Jesus he's brought it back to us. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Now watch what he said, in whom the godless world has blinded the minds of them which believe what? Not. not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Yes. So this light of the glorious God, this is not somewhere you go to church and you hear something and you go out the door and then you no, no transformation, no change, it's just information. Listen, if, if, if the Bible is just information, then just keep watching reels with all the information. But this is transformation. When this light comes into you, light is profitable to direct you the way you need to be Amen. in your life. Amen. So when I got into the word of God, all of a sudden, I wasn't the kid from Tomaville, Alabama no more. I now have been translated to the kingdom of God yeah. where God's given me his word. And I am now a son, an heir of God. And I begin to think different. Yes. And when I begin to think different, my life changed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. My life changed. Yes, sir. Your life just changed too. And it can continue to change and continue to impact people and be what God's caused you to do. Amen. This is why understanding your identity is so important. Glory be to God. Am I preaching to y'all? Yes, so hard. Right. Yes, sir. All right. Now, let me explain this to you real quick. The Bible can be seen in four events. Okay? Mm -hmm. When you read the Bible, and I said this in the last couple of weeks, so I keep saying until you kind of get it. The Bible can be seen in four events. First of all, you have what we call creation. So you see in Genesis chapter 1 and verse two, in chapter 2, you see God creating man and placing him in a place called the Garden of Eden. It was a, a place, the word Eden means bliss. It means abundance. God placed them in a place where, where it, was, it, was, it was this freedom to worship God, mm -hmm. a freedom to know God, and a freedom to live out God's purpose and will for their lives. 
Okay, that's how that that is one of the four events that you can see the Bible in. But after that, we see in Genesis chapter three, we see Satan's deception to pull man away from what God had originally intended them to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from then on forth, from Genesis four all the way to Matthew one, we see prophetic declarations about the coming of. Christ. Mm -hmm. And in Matthew, uh, uh, turn with me to Mark chapter uh, uh, 1. Mark chapter 1 and verse 14 and verse 15. I want you to see this with your own eyeballs. Yes, I said eyeballs. I want you to see this. Watch this. Mark chapter 1 and verse 14. Glory be to God. Holy Spirit said, I want you to see this. So let's look at it. Mark chapter 1, Mark's gospel. Chapter 1 and verse 14 and verse 15. You there? Yes. All right, good. All right, so it says, now after that, John was put in what? Prison. Prison. Mm -hmm. Jesus came into Galilee doing what? Preaching, Preaching the gospel of the kingdom of what? God. So up until that point, the kingdom of God was introduced here in creation. Okay? Satan came and deceived man, and now that kingdom of God had been hidden, but the prophetic declarations had came all the way from Genesis all the way up to, 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 to Jesus' birth. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Everything before that, everything that they were doing was a shadow of what was to come. Mm -hmm. And that shadow was what to come was when name was Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And now Jesus comes, and this is his introduction. You, this is his first thing that he says. Listen, he comes, watch this verse 15, and, and saying the time is what? Fulfilled. Fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is what? At hand. Repent and believe what? The gospel. Uh -huh. Now, I just showed you the scripture says the gospel, and we know according to Romans, the gospel is the power unto what? Salvation mm -hmm. to all those that believe. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know the gospel, you won't know the kingdom, you won't know your identity, and consequently you'll still be living under the world mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So isn't it great to come to church where you hear about Jesus Christ, yes, hear about indeed. the gospel of God, yes, so indeed. now you can grow into what God's called you to be. Yes. We're not, <laughs> you may be here, but you stay with this word, and the Bible says you desire the sincere milk of God's word, yeah. you'll grow thereby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, we, I can give you a real world example of that this week. Little Jace, where you go? Yeah, out, out the room, probably out there crying, getting fed right now. <laughs> okay, Jace was at the house. We fed him milk. Okay. Now, he has these two little uh, teeth in the back. He can't chew meat right now. Right. We try to put a little donut in his mouth. <laughs> he'll eat it and, mm, and, he'll, and, then, and he'll look at us and he'll smile. And he's like, oh, this is good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it wasn't enough to what? Sustain him. Mm -hmm. He needs that what? Milk. Mm -hmm. Because if he gets this milk, it's going to help him what? Grow. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. The Bible says it's the sincere milk of the word mm -hmm. that will help you grow. So having a steady diet of the word in your life will help you grow. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, that, you, the, the scripture says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every, every word, word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. This is God's spoken word to us. It, it, so notice what he said. Let's go back in this verse, uh, uh, verse 15. And he says, and Jesus saying, and saying. Okay, so he said this at the time. You ever say what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He said this at the time. This was a spoken revelation, word of God, spoken to a certain people at a certain time. But the Bible is not just written to a certain people at a certain time. It's now written unto you. And now I'm here to tell you, I'm here to announce to you that right now, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. hand. It's right here, right now. You are a part of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom, Luke 17, verse 21, is now on the inside of God. You. Amen. Glory be to God. That's where your identity starts. Your identity doesn't start with how tall you are. Your identity doesn't start with how short you are. Your identity doesn't start with what clothes you wear. Your identity doesn't start with what trends are going on. Your identity starts with what God has created you and what he's called you to be. And it starts with the word of God. Those are the words that you need to say over your life. What God has said about you. And you'll develop your identity and understand your identity and you'll walk confidently. And when no matter what rooms that you've been called to walk in, you're walking there as God has set you there to be there. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? That's right. You're not going in there with arrogance. Mm -hmm. You're going in there with confidence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Because you know who you are. And you know who you belong to. Mm -hmm. Turn with me to Psalms 23 
first six weeks, so we have to, because we anyway, let's just, just keep following the Holy Ghost. So praise God. Y'all like when I do that, or you want me to get back yes, to the Yes, Okay, praise God. Psalm 23. Let me show you part of your identity. Okay? Because you are a child of God. Let's start verse 1. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. I shall not. Well, this is not a funeral text, by the way. We don't just say this at a funeral, okay? Mm -hmm. This is something that's your identity. Mm -hmm. Now, question real quick. Who wrote this song? Anybody know? David. 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 Now, where did David get this revelation from? God. From God. Mm -hmm. He got it from God. I believe. How could he say the Lord is my shepherd? Why would he compare the Lord to a shepherd? Because he, remember, a he was a shepherd. He was out there in the field. Mm -hmm. That's right. And he learned his identity and learned more about God. Sometimes you can learn about God in the places where God's developing you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Instead of trying to run and get to where God wants you to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. I'm learning more about pastoring now in, in this season than I ever learned in my life. Instead of looking to the place where there's thousands of people there. See, you can't handle thousands of people if you can't handle uh, the people that's in front of you. Amen. The kingdom of God works through how you handle resources that God sends your way. Mm -hmm. If you can't handle uh, your current level of resources where you are, you can't manage or steward those resources, those resources will be taken away from you yes. mm -hmm. and given to someone who can't handle those resources. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. All right? And, uh, but if you can handle it, to whom much is given, what well, much more is required. Quiet. And God will give you more. Mm -hmm. Yes. You see, the scripture says that he says, I ordained, I chosen you and I ordained you that you can bring forth what? Fruit. Now, I said this on, on Wednesday night. If you take a apple seed, okay? For those that were here Wednesday night, you already know the answer. Those that weren't here Wednesday night, don't answer for them. If you take an apple seed, okay? All right? God is so good that within the, in the, when he made the earth, he put the seed within everything so they can produce. Okay? So within the apple, you have a seed. Okay. If you take that seed and then plant it into the ground, what will come up? Apple tree. Uh-huh. Apple, apple tree. Come on now. You got it. She wasn't here, but she got it. So an apple tree will come up. Not just one apple. Yes. Not just one apple, but an apple tree. Yes. God wants you to produce on high levels. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. High levels. Not just do something one time and all of a sudden, oh, I produce. No, he wants you on levels that you, that, that, that push you beyond a seed. See, see, seed doesn't look like what it's going to become. Come on. Amen. Yes. Your potential has already been placed on the inside of you. Amen to that. All you've got to do is find your identity. Stop living like the world. Mm -hmm. Start living like what God has called you to be. Stand up in the middle of a generation that talks about whatever they talk about and stand for God. Amen. Yes. And stand for God. And be willing for them to ridicule you, to laugh at you, but then sometimes they're going to come to you uh, uh, and they're going to say, hey, hey, you know what? Can you pray for me? Uh -huh. oh, absolutely. You know they are. Absolutely. Amen. I can pray for you. <laughs> you know they are. God sent you up here. Let me go to this scripture. Here's what he said. Psalms 23. Yeah. He says, if the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not what? Want. That should be your confession. As a child of God, you, the word, real, real word for want means to be is translated as lack. Mm -hmm. Lack means yeah. to have a shortage of. Okay? It means that you won't have enough. But the scripture says, when you know the Lord God is your shepherd, you will never lack. You could look in the cupboard or into your, uh, your cabinet, and it may be empty. But you can say to that cabinet, the Lord's my shepherd. I shall not lack. Your identity doesn't come by what's in front of you. Your identity comes from him. Yes. That's right. That's right. And watch what he said, verse 2. Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. He said, he maketh me the, he got to make you lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside, he's got to lead your life. Mm -hmm. These are clues. Success leaves clues, by the way. Yes, mm -hmm. it does. Okay. David was very successful. Yes, he was. Very successful as the king of Israel. And he left us some clues of why he was successful. He, God was leading his life. He decided no matter what situation. Remember, David was in caves on the run and all kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. 
And he didn't, there was only one time scripture says that he broke down. And remember, he had broke down and he, and the, because the people talk about stoning him because all the wives and stuff had been taken. Yeah. But the scripture didn't stay there with him in this pity party. No. The Bible says, and David encouraged himself, what? In the Lord. Lord. Oh, God. Yeah. That is your identity. Your identity comes from knowing God, being in relationship with him on a regular basis. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Watch what he said. Here's what David said. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of what? Righteousness, Righteousness for his name's sake. So he's not just living this life like he wants to. Verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He identified that there were opposition around him. He identified, but he didn't stay with it. Yea, though I walk through. Hey, I'm going to this side. Y'all sleep. Come on. He says, although I walk what? Through. See, so you got to keep it moving. Some of y'all stay stuck in what's going on currently and not looking at the identity of what Jesus has already delivered you from. Come on now. You got to walk through it. Amen. You got to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh -huh. and, and as you walk through, notice what he said. Here, let this be your confession. I will fear no, no evil. evil. Yes. I don't care if it's coronavirus. I don't care if it's they talking about the crime in the city. I don't care what's going on. I will fear no evil. Yes, sir. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But that is confidence. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that confidence, you're going to bleed on everybody else. Mm -hmm. My God. Everybody you come around. Man, and you don't see. Death and life is found in the power of the tongue. So what you say is what you quickly agree with. It's the same again. If Satan is like this, all right? So anybody ever receive a package at that door? Remember, you have to receive a package and you have to sign for it. Amazon came and got away with that, praise God. But you used to have to sign for packages. Remember that? So the delivery, uh, uh, so what happened was, you know why they, they got rid of that? Because people getting bit and dogs and all this kind of stuff. So they just come and sling your package and get on out of there. You understand? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you ever had a package in the bush and you're like, how did you get over there? It'd be all broken. Be all right. broken stuff. <laughs> Thank God for Amazon, they take it back any kind of way. Right. But here's what happens. In the realm of the spirit, mm -hmm. will you sign for a package by what you say? Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's mm -hmm. interesting. So if you yeah. see something in front of you, and it's contrary to the word of God. Mm -hmm. You sign for the package by you agreeing with what it says. Mm -hmm. The Bible, the, see, the Bible is a book of principles. It's a book of laws that, that God has already set forth in motion. Mm -hmm. And since he set forth in motion, he can't go back and change his word. Mm -hmm. But what he can go back and do is change your mind and how you think. And so now you can, now you can get in line with those principles. And now you can operate on a level that you never operated on before. Mm -hmm. So here's, here's something happened. You go to the doctor or you feel a symptom of a sore throat coming up okay you don't go and say well i got a sore throat now you sign for the package yeah. You see, that you, you sign for it by saying and agreeing with it. Come on and teach and it. And when you agree with it, you go, now it's yours. What you going to do with it? <laughs> what you going to do? Go to the pharmacy? Now you're relying on a system that you were never meant to rely on. Mm, you're my supposed God. to live out of your spirit. I'm yeah. preaching better than you. My Amen. goodness. Right. Glory be to God. Oh. Man, we're in the good shit right here, right now. Hey. You understand what I'm saying? So, so, so you sign for it. And that's what David was teaching us right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, though I'm walking through the ah. valley of shadow of death. Mm -hmm. Notice the faith. Faith, it gets you. Faith says, I have an expected outcome no matter what's going on around me. Mm -hmm. I will fear no evil. Mm -hmm. Although I'm walking through this moment right now, you may be in a season where things have been hit. You've been hit so hard, so you, you don't even know your first name. you just been hit. You understand what I'm saying? But now you got to say, you know what? I'm walking through this season. I'm coming out on the other side. My God shall supply all my needs. You understand what I'm saying? You got to stay with it, guys. It's your confession that will lead to your possession. Oh my goodness. Come on now. Now watch this, what he says. So now watch what he says. He says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and thy staff, and they comfort me. Okay, he was saying, the word of God is like a rod, and thy staff is the Holy, uh, uh, the Holy Ghost. They comfort me. The, the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit being what? A comforter. You have the word. You have the Holy Ghost. My God. Comfort yourself every day. Comfort yourself every day. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And, and if you can't find comfort, go back and listen to this one again. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So you can now be encouraged and say, you know what? I can't find comfort. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. And ask the Holy Ghost. Ask the Holy Ghost. He said, uh, you can ask God for any type of wisdom in your life. Yes. There is, there, there is exact knowledge to show you exactly what you need for every problem that you're facing. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all got going through something right now? What you <laughs> show of hands. Amen. All right. Walking. Now, let me ask you this. You've been through something before in times past. How many of y'all been through something in times past? Amen. How many times has God brought you out? Every, Every single time. time. What? Come on, Pastor. So then why are you Every concerned time. about this current situation? Oh, my you know God. What I'm my God today. It's when we start to really think about this thing and we say, wait a minute now. Uh, I got a testimony. Huh. Mm -hmm. No, we uh, we have open testimony mics, and we will at time to time make sure your testimony is you know it's a testimony. Mm -hmm. But there be, should be times when you say, "Listen, uh, my God has, has brought me out of this before." Mm -hmm. Would you say if He did it once, He could do it what again? again. Yeah. Psalm thirty four nineteen. So there you go. What is it, brother? What is it? Right. Many other afflictions are the righteous, but God delivers them out of all, out of them all. Out of them what? Yeah. Oh. Out of them what? Oh. You know, we put the emphasis on many are different. You know, I'm, woe is me. I got so many afflictions. <laughs> but see, you don't know your identity. Amen. Because when you know your identity, you know you're going what? Through. Yes. He'll deliver you out of them. Oh. 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 Glory to God. You should go home and just get a laundry mm. list of the things that you're going through. All right. That's going to be done. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's going to be done. Mm -hmm. That's going to be done. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be done. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's, right. that's how you're going to get through. Yes. That's right. Or you're going to come here and say, I need counseling. I need scripture. I need prayer. And you got the answer within you. Come on. Say mm -hmm. this. Amen. Right, now let me go back up here. Good word. All right. Watch this verse 5. He says, This is what I was trying to get to. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my who? Enemies. It ain't going to be smooth sailing. Mm hmm. You're going to be in front of some people that ain't going to like you. Mm -hmm. They ain't going to talk about you. They ain't going to be like, hey, brother so-and-so. And as soon as you walk up, man, can you believe what he is? Right. Because God placed him in front of you yeah. and ain't around you yeah. so that now he can so show himself strong through, through you. you. Yes. That's yes. right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. I'm going this side. All okay. right. I said he's going to show himself strong Amen. through you. Yes. Y'all got it? Y'all this side? Y'all got it? Yes. All right, high five your neighbor over here or something. Do something. Give me some excitement. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good word. He, said, he says he prepares a table. Yes, sir. Table. Mm -hmm. What do you do at a table? Dice, he, he, he ain't talking about just ramen noodles on the table. You understand what I'm talking about? I'm talking about like Thanksgiving table. You understand? Yeah. Feasting. Oh, yes. You about to feast in front of your enemies. Right. Ah, you understand right. what I'm saying? Right. You about to feast in front of them. Because yes. they've been watching you. Mm -hmm. And they've been talking about you. Come on. And they've been looking at you. Yeah. And they've been roasting you. Yeah. But God's about to elevate you. Amen. Right. 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 Amen. I was about to say that part. Amen. Watch what he says. He says, he says Thou prepares. Notice this is what David said out of his own mouth. Now, who was his enemy? Saul. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Yes. But notice how, what he did with Saul. He didn't go over there. I know you didn't. He didn't run over there with a javelin and try to take him out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He could have. There was times when he could have. All right. But he didn't. <laughs> right. He said, I would not touch the Lord's what? Anointed. Anointed. That Ooh. tells us and that indicates to us that vengeance is what? His. Yes. So the enemies around you, don't be calling down fire from heaven on you. I know that's right. You know, right. Don't be going... <laughs> you know, going back and ready to slap them. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Remember, we can't go back to the person of the world. We got to be a living what? Sacrifice. Mm. And as we're a living sacrifice, we can show them the love of God. Amen. As we show them the love of God, that can bring them out of that darkness. Amen. I told you there was a guy I was working with years ago. I was in um, Houston, Texas. And I was working with this guy. This guy was, man, he was hating on me like, I mean, everything I did. I was quickly elevating through the company, and this guy was just sad. Every time I look, I'd come back and look, and he tried to sabotage me. Mm -hmm. He didn't think I, I saw what was going on, but I saw what was going on. Huh. Mm -hmm. And so my boss, at the time, he saw it. But he, he <laughs> we used to talk about uh, ministry and stuff. He said, well, I would try to complain to him about the other guy, but he said, you know what, David does the same thing about you. And I said, well, maybe that's not my answer. I'm just going to pray about it. So I just started praying about it. Mm. You not know God dealt with his heart 
I say his name now, praise God, we edit that out. But <laughs> I, 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 God dealt with his heart, and one day he met me at work with tears, and a grown man, I'm talking about grown, sweaty, hairy man, met me at work with tears in his eyes, talking about, hey, I'm sorry for the way I treated you. Mm -hmm. He God. said, I was jealous of you when you hit the door. I was feeling competitive like you were coming to take my place. I went there to take his place. Mm -hmm. What place did he have? I mean, it wasn't like he was a president of the company or something. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I wasn't there to take his place, but it, consequently I'm here to take over. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm here to get my, I'm here to get me, me. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But it wasn't against him, but in his mind, he thought it was. Mm -hmm. huh. right. You know, but praying for him that day, we became the best of friends. Mm -hmm. Because God sets you up in the front of people so that you can win them to Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So look at your circumstances and situations now. See where God's placed you. Maybe they're on purpose. Maybe God's placed you there on purpose for a reason. For so God's about to elevate you. Yes. I'll tell you this word, Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. It says, God will do a new thing. Y'all turn there real quick. Y'all ready? Let's, man, man, we only got about 10 minutes, but let me share this with you real quick. Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. So next week we'll continue this series because I didn't get anywhere we're supposed to get to today. But praise God. God, we got where the Holy Ghost wanted us That's to be. Right. That's good. Too. Watch this, Isaiah 43, verse 18 and verse 19. Y'all with me so far? Yes. yes. I love y'all. Love you. Y'all let me do my little rabbit trails and I appreciate it. I'll come back next week. I appreciate it. Isaiah 43, verse 18 and verse 19. Watch this what he said. He says, this is going to help you in your identity. Watch this. Verse 18. Read this out loud. Ready? One, two, three. Read. Remember ye not the former things, neither do consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Wow, watch what he says. Here's the first thing about your identity that you're going to need to know. Remember not the past. Let it go. Hallelujah to that. Let it go. Okay? No matter where you came from, you're going to have to let it go. Okay? If you're going to impact this world, all right? If you're going to impact this world for Jesus, you're going to have to lose the identity of self. Amen. And only find the identity of Jesus. Amen. Jesus lost so much of himself. That when the, he said this at the age of 12, he was went down to the feast. As they went down to the feast, his, he got left behind some kind of way. I don't know how that happened. But he stayed behind and they found him in the temple talking to adults. Mm -hmm. Doctors and lawyers. That's what this is the scripture said. And, and the parents were like, Jesus, where you been? He said, don't you know I'm about my what? My business. business. Come on, man. His identity wasn't wrapped into being the son <laughs> yes, he did. of Mary and Joseph. Yes, oh. yes. yes, yes. what I'm saying? His identity was wrapped in being about his father's what? The business. And when you learn the identity that God has given unto you, and you have the mind of Christ, which the scripture says, you will be about your father's business. Mm -hmm. Now, we know, according to scripture, well, we know at some point that Joseph, his father, had died. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. How do we know that? Because at the cross, the, Mary was the only one there that they acknowledged. Yes. You get over the book of Acts 1, no Joseph. But Jesus didn't park in death and in grief. Mm -hmm. Okay? Some of you have lost parents. Some of you have lost loved ones. You can't park there. My God. You can't park there. Because if you park there, you're going to be stuck there. Yeah. And God put you on this purpose. Yes, they were in your life for a reason. Yes, I miss my mama. Yes, I miss my, my daddy. But you know what? I'm not going to be over here on this Father's Day crying and boohooing over y'all. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I was building this earth. I was born in this earth for a purpose. And I'm standing in my purpose now. They helped prepare me for this purpose. And now I'm here. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not coming here to bleed on you with everything that's on, that happened in my life. He says, remember not the what? Former things. Good or bad, people. My God. Good or bad. Don't park there. You got to let it go. If you don't let it go, watch this, what he says. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of what? Old. Because if you do, verse 19, you can't get to. He says, behold, I will do it. What? New thing. Behold means to look and take it in. You, it means to see it. 
And in order to see what God is about to do, you can't see it with the eyes of your natural. You got to see it through the eyes of faith. I'm telling you, there's got to be a, a willingness in your life to say, I, I, I may be here, but faith says I'm going there. And if I'm going there, I can't look here. I can't look to my past experiences. I can't look to the limitations that I may have educationally. I can't look to the things that I feel I'm inadequate. I've got to stay focused on that if I'm going to get over there. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Athletes know that. They do this all the time. In order to go from, there was a quote from um, this basketball player. He said when he was in, I think he was in the third grade or, or something like that, he said he played summer uh, basketball. He didn't, score, he didn't score points the whole summer. Mm. The whole entire summer, then this dude is a famous NBA player. He said for one summer, he didn't score the whole entire summer. And, he, and, and you would think he would quit. But he said, no, by the time he was in the eighth or ninth grade, he became the best player in his state. Mm. Why? Because he couldn't hold on to the times that where he wouldn't hit any points. Mm -hmm. He had to work and develop his mind right. mm -hmm. to get to the place where I'm trying to get to this level. Right. Mm. And we call that arrogance. Mm. Or we look at that as like, oh, you, you, you think you all that. But you got to stay focused Amen. in this generation. Amen. You got to stay focused on what God's called you to do. Because yeah. you can't, re you, again, I said, if you're in here and you're in your 30s or you're under 30, you got to fail forward. You're going to make some mistakes. Yes. <laughs> you're going to make some mistakes. You're going to miss it sometimes. Yes. But remember, stay focused on what God's called you to do. Because when God wants to do a new thing in your life, now, the Bible says, it shall spring, it shall spring forth. Well, I'm Kirk Lee, and I approve this message. Did y'all get anything out of today's message? So good.